Michael, there was a bit of illness going through the squad at the end of last week. How's it been this week and how, how much work have you been able to uh, do in training with everyone? Well, we got the lads Monday off because of it. Um, we didn't want them to get them home trying to rest and recuperate. So we had a good day Tuesday. Um, I think Chris Clements is still... He was in Tuesday and he trained Tuesday, but he's still carrying a little bit, so we'll have to see where, where he's at today. Other than that, I think everyone's got over what... Like, it wasn't like an epidemic or anything, it was just a few sniffles. But people like Tavon Campbell were laid low with it, Luke Varney went off and complained. Are they OK as well? Yeah, yeah. like I said, they all trained on Tuesday without any, any problems. So, uh, like, even, well, Clem trained. He just uh, sounded like he'd eaten about a thousand razors. So we'll, again, I've not seen him yet this morning, so we'll, we'll see where he's at. And how's Tom Nichols been in training? Obviously, his first four weeks training with Charlie. Yeah, well, he says his first four weeks. He's only had a day's training on Tuesday, so he's he's a good player. Um, technically, very very assured. The players obviously know of each other all the time. Anyway, um, I think he's already jumped in a car school as ready as well. So one thing we do have, we have a an easy group to walk into. It's not particular. We've not made many or any prickly characters, and when the team's going well, the players want to embrace new players because they want that they help them on. And there's, there's always that little bit of a competitive element as well. But I think long of the days where someone walks in, you go, well, he might take my place. So I'm not going to speak to him. I don't think. Well, that's what we don't want, and that definitely hasn't happened. Mm. Um, didn't ask about injuries. Connor Thomas, how are his ribs? Again, he's not. Where he will train today. It's a difficult one with a rib because until he trains, we won't know. Um, so it's not, you know, if, if you twist your ankle or you've got a sore and you're, you're, you're limping or you're not, it's with a rib, it's, it's just whether you can cope with the pain. There's not a lot we could do for it. So he'll, he'll train today and we'll have to assess him from there. Scunthorpe obviously sacked Paul Hurst last week. How closely do you watch that situation in terms of who they might put in charge, who is in charge, and how that might affect things? Well, I know who's in charge, Russell Wilcox, he was assistant manager at Burnley under Brian Laws when I was there, so I know Russ really well. Um, I actually saw Hurstie yesterday at an LMA event, so I, I don't know. They, they might bring someone in. I don't. We're not expecting anyone to go in. Um, they obviously tried a different formation on Saturday and changed back to what was a little bit more familiar to themselves during the game. So we don't know what they're going to play. We can, we can only preempt what we think they're going to do and focus on us. Um, we're in, a, we're in a good moment, got some good players performing quite well and we've given ourselves an opportunity so there's a definite carrot there so it's, don't worry about too much, always be aware of what the opposition is, I someone's had this conversation with me every week but it's more about what we do, if we turn up and deliver what we can do, we believe we can hurt any team in the league. And make them worry about you? Well, yeah of course, and that's not, that's not disrespectful because when we went to the top of the league at Crewe and when we go to people at Swindon it was we're always aware of what the opposition can bring. So they could play a three or they could play a 4-4-1-1 or a 4-4-2. They've got different permutations because they've done it all during the season. So we've seen all of their permutations and, and their different uh, personnel. So once we get the team sheet, we'll probably have an idea. And even if you get that wrong, after a minute, you're not. Our players now know that different permutations are different formations, different things we need to do to tweak that. But when we've got the ball, it's about what we do with it. The home game against Scunthorpe um, seems a long time ago. It was a long time ago. It was in August. But how important was that win in setting up Cheltenham's season, getting it rolling after what happened on the opening day at Leighton Orient? Um, yeah, I think it was... The, 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 the Orient one was a disappointing one for many different reasons. Um, but it, I suppose it did kick-start. It was, you know, we were playing against a team that were just come down from League One and it... Obviously, I think 4-1, I think it was on the day. And I think... Uh, it gave the lads maybe a bit of a shot on the arm of maybe we can compete this year. Obviously, the last, the, the last year and the last years before that, we'd always struggled at the bottom of the league. Um, so I think it was a, probably a marker, really, of when, when you do turn up and you do do these things, it was, this is what you can do. Hurst had a tough job, because sometimes you go into a club and there's the sort of that, that, that not I don't want to say a rot has set in, but sometimes it's that it's getting out of that mentality of getting used to losing, and sometimes when you go down a division, players don't won't accept that you're in that division. They think they're a, a division higher. Because I've I've had it when we've been at a club when they've come out of the Premier League. You see it when teams come out of the Premier League. Look at Stoke and things like that. Now it's 
the players go, well, I'm, I should be in that league or something. Well, the reality is you're not, but sometimes it's not that easy just to, to snap them out of it. Mm. And to be fair to him, sorry, and to be fair, he did turn it round, Ersty. But I think the reason why he's part of company has got nothing to do with football reasons, by all accounts. Mm. John C. Smith, any developments on his situation? Well, we're expecting him to sign his contract today. I've not seen him yet this morning, so uh, we're hoping he's going to sign his deal. Um, yeah, so got that sorted, hopefully. And that leaves John with a lot of strikers, but a lot of different types of strikers, I suppose, importantly. Yeah, I think um, it's not ideal, really, that you've got eight centre-forwards. Um, but obviously, with, with Reg having his injury, Ruben's had a few setbacks along the way. We're almost just trying to cover all bases. But the one thing we have got, we've got definite competition for places. So it's um, yeah, it's going to be fun into the top end of the pitch. It's, it's good for me because I can keep turning around. I don't have to worry that I'm going to have one. I'm definitely going to have three or four. And I suppose what that does mean is well, competition for places on the bench as well. Yeah, um, we've just gone through different sort of permutations. And if everyone's fit, you're going to have to leave three or four players out of the squad, which is tough. Um, but that's, that, that is part of the job and it's up to people to react in the right way and respond in the right way um, because, like I said, it's, it's not about any sort of individual at this stage of the season. Everyone's got their own agendas, everyone's got their own ego. It's about whatever 11's on the pitch. If that, if that 11 are winning at any one moment, then everyone at the club's winning.